Having water damage in and around the home is never a lot of fun. It can cause a lot of problems. Uh, a couple of years back I had some water damage from the upstairs neighbor because I live in an apartment. And I was thinking a while back, isn't there some kind of Internet of Things error solution to warn me of the fact that water leakage is going on? I asked on the Dutch technology forum tweakers.net and someone uh, told me that the Xiaomi Akara uh, humidity sensor is actually the kind of sensor I want. They're, these are cheap, 10 to 20 euros, uh, so you can install a lot of them and you can receive them with a uh, uh, specially installed uh, uh, sniffer stick and save all the data on a Raspberry Pi and uh, present the data there as well. And in this video I'm going to tell you how I did it. So this is the hardware I've used. First of all I have used the sensors, the Xiaomi Akara humidity sensors. They do temperature, they do humidity and they do air pressure, the newer ones. And the, I bought five of them. They're 10 to 15 euros per piece so they're not really breaking the bank. They run on a normal battery, a Panasonic battery, nothing out of the ordinary. They have a self-adhesive strip on it. I haven't used that yet. I just placed it in the house, but I'm going to stick these to the walls at some point. Uh, they also have a backup self-adhesive strip if you ever want to move them. So that's cool. And these send out their data over a protocol called Zigbee. Now you can receive that data with a Show me Akara Hub uh, to, uh, but uh, a cheaper solution is to use uh, to buy this uh, CC2531 sniffer stick, which can also receive Zigbee after some modifications. These are 10 euros about, and uh, when you uh, you can you can flash new software onto them with a downloader cable like this. This is a downloader cable and here we have a debugger cable. So you need this as well in this solution. And uh, you stick this end in a PC or a Mac, I suppose, and this also in another USB port. And then you can use the uh, software by Texas Instruments to flash the software you find on the Zigbee 2 MQTT website. Now, someone told me it's also possible to connect this uh, to uh, the GPIO port of a Raspberry Pi. I have done it this way. I have no. I just followed the instructions on the Zigbee to MQTT website. I have no idea how to do it otherwise. But anyway, I got this uh, working. I flashed this. Uh, now you can stick it in a Raspberry Pi. And uh, you can install the Zigbee 2 MQTT software. And um, you can also install the Domotic software so your data is coming in nicely, stored on your Raspberry Pi. And with your Domotic software, which is a software for home automation, you can get the data on, for example, an iPad or iPhone app. And um, yeah, so apart from all that, there's one little piece of hardware I've also bought. I bought uh, a 3D printed cover to keep my Zigbee, to, Zigbee uh, receiver nice and free of uh, any spoiled tea or anything. So there's another piece of humidity protection for you. So this is the CC2531 sniffer stick connected to the downloader cable. And this is the correct way of connecting it with the red line on the right side, opposite of the USB port. Now we need to connect that sniffer stick to a USB port of the computer, but we need to connect the debugger cable to the computer as well. So we need two USB ports. Now if you follow the instructions of the Zigbee 2 MQTT website, you see that you have to install Texas Instruments Smart RF Flash Programmer and here you flash the Zigbee 2 MQTT software on the stick.
This is the only slightly scary part. If your computer shuts down, your stick might get lost. But I was running this on a laptop, so shutdown was pretty a pretty low risk. And it all worked out in the end. So here we are on the Raspberry Pi in a browser there, and we go to the Zigbee 2 MQTT software site, and here we find instructions, and we can run these instructions by copying the commands here to a terminal window. So we can, for example, copy this command here, and go to the terminal window and just right click, I think or shift uh, insert and boom, there we run this command. And this checked if the sniffer stick is there and it is. And uh, there's a second command to check that, but we don't really need that. So we skip that and we go. And now we're going to install Node.js. And for this first, we need to add a repository. So we get the last version of Node.js. And now we have that repository there and now we can install a whole lot of things, amongst which Node.js. So this runs for a while, hopefully without errors, just like that. And then we do a couple of checks. We're gonna check if we have to write Node.js version now. You probably should. It should be the 10.x. Uh, or at least that was at the time I was installing this. And we also run a version check on NPM, which is used to install the Zigbee 2 MQTT software later on. And that is the right version as well. Now we're going to download the Zigbee 2 MQTT software itself. And we're going to run that. We're going to copy that to slash opt slash zigbee 2 mqtt and this will be the place where we will find our software after this and the last step uh well oh and we need to add some permissions for the pi user and now we can go to the directory and we can install zigbee 2 mqtt And this takes a bit longer. And in the end, it uh, might end with a couple of warnings. If the warnings are like these, you can ignore them. If there are no errors, that's probably a good installation. So let's have a look at the configuration. For this, we have a configuration.yaml file in the data directory. And when you compare that with the example in the documentation, you'll see there's not a whole lot to change. It has some extra stuff, but leave it in. And now we might start the Zigbee 2 MQTT software. With npm start. And at this point, we are going to encounter a problem and the problem is that well, we get a merit message that zigbee2 mqtt can't find an mqtt server and in hindsight it is maybe sort of kind of logical it's not in the documentation but you need to install an mqtt server and one you can use is called mosquito so this is the command to install that And after we have installed that and we try starting Zigbee 2 MQTT again, now we'll see things work a whole lot better. So now it's time to add a sensor. This is one of the sensors, the Akara humidity sensor. It has a little button on top. And when you hold that button for five seconds, it will pair with the Zigbee 2 MQTT software. It will flash three times. And look at that. We have our first 
actual data from the sensors with temperature, humidity, and pressure. Congratulations. There's one more thing I want to do here, and that is I want to run Zigbee 2 MQTT as a daemon. And that means that it will run in the background, that I don't have to start npm start every time. So for this we can just edit this file. And the documentation has you covered, because you can simply copy this bit And you can paste it in the file and save it. And now you can start your daemon like that. And you see nothing happening because it runs in the background. That's the whole deal. But you can run this status command to see if it's actually running. And it does. So that is great. You get this tree structure of processes. That's great. So now there's one more thing. I want to have it running every time I start up my Raspberry Pi. And for this, we can run the next command, the enable command. There's one more thing I want to show you, and that is the Zigbee2 MQTT log files. And for this, you go to the data log directory, and underneath you find directories with date times in them. And you, when you go to the latest, you can look at the latest log file. And in Linux, there's a tail minus F command, with which you can follow every new thing that is added to that file. So when I pair a new sensor, you can see that data coming in. That's very nice if you want to debug things. Now, in the next video, I will show you how to install Domotics, which is our home automation software, where you can get in all this humidity and temperature data. And for this, uh, we need to install Domotics, of course, and we'll go to a couple of things to get that running. So I hope to see you in the next video, and good luck running your Zigbee2 MQTT sensor network.